Hello church family, God bless you, happy Christmas. This video should be coming out shortly after Christmas, a time of joy and feasting and celebration. What a great time, I hear you say, to think about, talk about prayer and fasting. We wanna do a bit of teaching ahead of our week of prayer in January, really to speak about the practice of fasting. Um, partly for the week of prayer itself, but also really just holding up an often neglected discipline. We've got some idea what prayer's about. We, we teach about that quite often, this relationship with God, conversation, honesty with him, talking to him, uh, being honest when we feel rotten and everything's going wrong, or you know things are good and we tell him we love him and asking him questions, asking for help, listening to him, all of that. Um, we, we talk a lot about prayer, but fasting, not so much. We have taught a bit about fasting over the years, but not consistently, certainly. And we've got some learning to do. It's something that Jesus speaks about in the Sermon on the Mount, no less. So he speaks in Matthew chapter 6, saying, When you fast, do not look sombre as the hypocrites do. They disfigure their faces to show others they're fasting. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you're fasting, but only to your Father who's unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Um, really saying there, don't make it obvious that you're doing this, don't, don't do it to look impressive, but do it when you fast. Uh, in Matthew chapter 9, people ask him why his disciples don't fast, and his response is really, uh, they don't yet, but they will. He says, how can they do it while, while the bridegroom is with them, speaking about himself, but when the bridegroom's taken away, they will fast. Uh, where's the verse? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. That's, that's the age that we're in now. The bridegroom's been taken from us. He's coming back one day. In the meantime, there is some measure of fasting to do. Uh, it's a very normal practice and spiritual discipline for early Christians that is somewhat sort of forgotten or ignored or misunderstood in our time, but it's something that's important and powerful. So fasting at its uh, most basic is going without food, not eating. It's uh, going without food, drinking only water usually for a set period of time. It's what we sometimes call a spiritual discipline. Uh, your spiritual life and your physical body are not disconnected. Your body and your spirit are deeply connected. Uh, what you do with your body matters spiritually. And that's, I think that's not hard to understand, is it? You can honor God with your body and you can offend God with your body. And fasting is deliberately going without one of the most basic parts of life, food, and a necessary part of life. It hurts and it's a practice of doing that and we will look at why do we do that and what's it for what does it do i just want to clarify uh, near the start that if you've got any kind of eating disorder where um, you maybe struggle to eat enough or to uh, consistently eat enough food i don't recommend that you fast uh, i think for you if that's you discipline and obedience is is really more along the lines of making sure that you eat enough and eat properly and consistently and stick to um, some sensible things there but uh, for the majority of the church family this is something that i think we want to take seriously so why do we do it what does it do there are some mysteries here there's some things that honestly I don't know um, but there is lots that we can say about fasting that's quite helpful even putting this video together there's been lots that I've been, uh, as I've been listening and reading some different things that I've gone, oh, there's, there's been some real revelations for me about fasting. It's like, I wish I'd known that sooner. So first of all, fasting is obedience. Um, it seems, you know, those passages that we've read. And indeed, as you read through the Bible, there's, there's this regular mention of fasting amongst God's people, both in the Old and the New Testament. There's some expectation from Jesus that his followers will fast at times and there's no rules there on frequency or how often it's not quite the same as prayer where we're told to pray constantly um, and I, I guess you can't fast constantly because you die um, but in some way there seems to be an expectation that this would be part of a normal part of your life as a disciple 
it is as well as obedience it's a discipline discipline is is usually speaking about doing something that doesn't come naturally that uh, is often difficult to some degree uh, it can be a bit of a challenge can be uncomfortable but that does us good so prayer is discipline um, it's often not what we might choose to do first uh, to you know, deliberately carve out time in the day to speak to God instead of doing other things. It's a discipline. It's, it's hard going for us. Sometimes learning you know, how to pray and what we say, it can be a real challenge. And uh, you have to give yourself to it. You have to make time and uh, be determined to learn and, and keep going and push on when it feels tough. You, dis- you discipline yourself so that you'll grow in strength and maturity. You're, uh, you're growing as you do so. And if a normal part of following Jesus is to suffer with him, which we do believe, the Bible teaches that, fasting as a discipline is one of the best ways that I know of preparing and training yourself to endure suffering. Because fasting is uncomfortable, it hurts in some different ways. You are suffering to a degree as you do it. You're training yourself as you do so. I mean, that sounds pretty unpleasant, you know, just following Christmas, enjoying good food. Uh, but it's powerful. If you train yourself to endure some suffering when things are more straightforward, imagine the strength that you'll have to stand when the pressure's really on. And, and the other way around, if you wait until the pressure's on, you might find yourself trying to, trying to stand, trying to rely on muscles that just don't have the strength because you've never bothered to train them. It matters. It's a discipline and it's one that we want to take seriously. It is, uh, I think, a physical reminder of God's everyday provision, something that leads to gratitude. It stops you taking things for granted. So when I fast and my stomach's growling for me, as well as there are lots of thoughts that go through your mind, but one of them is actually I'm grateful that I've only ever gone hungry out of choice. Now, that's not true for plenty of people in this country and many other countries. Um, But for me, it is. I've only ever gone hungry out of choice. And it leads me to think, well, oh, God, thank you for that. Thank you for that, because it's not so for many. And as well as causing gratitude to grow up in you, it can cause compassion to grow up in you as well. As you start to think, hey, this feels a bit horrible. And, And some people are going through this daily and they don't have the means to to just bring it to an end whenever they they feel like it's a good time to stop the fast it's it can lead you to pray it can cause compassion to grow these are good things Uh, it's an expression of dependency on god so jesus fasted uh, for 40 days when he began his public ministry which is uh, scary (laughs) but people still do that at times as uh, uh looking to to do what he did you you can go a long time without food not so much without water but without food you can go a long time and at at the end of that time the enemy the devil came to to try and tempt him and one of the things he was doing was you know you you could make these rocks turn into bread if you wanted and jesus reply is well man doesn't live on bread alone but on, on on the words of god and when we fast it it's a little bit of Uh, sort of saying those words again man doesn't live on bread alone i need god more than i need food i need god more than i need food if i had to choose god i want to choose you um i hope i would (laughs) it's it's again it's building spiritual strength building uh dependency on expressing dependency uh there's something in that 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 we draw close to god as we fast and initially you might find yourself thinking about food mostly um, but the more that you practice this the more there's a measure of uh, of strength that's growing the more there's a measure of closeness with God that can come going without something good food is good um, but going without something good in order to draw near to him we see as well that it is in some way rewarded um, in the same way as uh, there's other things that we we see Jesus speaks about there being a reward. Um, so again, from the Sermon on the Mount, he speaks about giving to the needy. And if you're doing it, not just to look impressive, but to please God, then your father who sees what's done in secret will reward, will reward you. And he says exactly the same thing about fasting. Your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Um, and uh, there's a little bit of like, I don't know what that necessarily looks like, but if you get it right, there is some measure of reward, whether that's 
uh, actually answer to prayers, whether it's God speaking in, in uh, an important way, whether it's greater closeness with God, whether it's growing discipline and maturity, whether it's rewards in heaven. We, you know, It's not laid out for us, but it's there. I want, to, I want that. Um, don't you? Uh, in some way, I think as well, fasting aids us in our prayers. We see that where Jesus comes to uh, deal with a man who's being, uh, his son is being plagued by a demon. And the disciples have been unable to get rid of it. And Jesus says, this kind can only come out by prayer. And, and there's a note in your Bibles that say, um, and fasting. So it's not totally sure that fasting is in there, but there's a measure of seeming like fasting's got some role of strengthening prayers at times. Esther, in the book of Esther you may have read, calls the nation of Israel to eat and drink nothing for three whole days. This is a significant fast as they pray for the salvation of their people from genocide. It's an expression of just utter mourning and grief and horror and throwing themselves wholly on God. Uh, There's so much in this. I mean, do you have any kind of practice of fasting or experience of it? This matters. It matters and we want to learn. It's it's, it's all through the Bible. It, it feels like it's important. Uh, I listened to a, a really great talk from Tim Mackey. He's one of the people behind the Bible Project. And he was pointing out that the Bible has loads of examples of fasting and that much of the time it's not simply to aid in our prayers. It's not that fasting because there's a big need and oh, we need to pray into this with, with extra strength. Let's, let's fast to, to really make it count. Um, but, but he made the point that you know, there's moments like that, like in Esther and elsewhere, but also there's often fasting uh, seemingly in response to sort of sacred moments, significant calls from God. Fasting is a way of physically marking and taking that seriously. Uh, at the heart of the practice, there's this kind of physical response to what God's doing in your life. So he talks about uh, crossroads or defining moment fasts, like Jesus beginning his public ministry, there's prayer and fasting. Uh, a normal part of the Christian life in the Bible seems to be to prayer and fast. Um, in Acts, you get Barnabas and Saul. Um, the believers have been praying and fasting as, as, poor, as part of their normal Christian life. Uh, during that, God speaks to them and tells uh, the church to set aside Barnabas and Saul for this whole new thing, like the beginning of their missionary work. It's, it's a huge moment. And their response to being told that by God is again, is to fast and pray. It's marking with their body something new is beginning and I'm preparing myself for it, almost like physically resetting yourself. Uh, when elders are appointed in Acts 14, prayer and fasting, there's loads of examples. Uh, he spoke about the turning from sinful choices fast, which uh, he said actually this, the, the vast majority of times that we read about fasting in the Bible is people are repenting, uh, they are asking God for forgiveness of their sins and of course when you come to God in repentance there is forgiveness but there's also this response that often follows of fasting. Uh, again just marking with your body, grief over what you have done and that you're sorry for and almost like a physical resetting and saying no I'm going to turn a different way and uh, it's, it's the start of a new day and if you're stuck in a pattern of sin and you've never fasted I want to encourage you to try it. Uh, confession as well, speaking about what's been going on to others, just being honest about that, but also fasting. Um, and there's power in it. He speaks about as well the tragic calamity fast, where events that are so grievous that the only appropriate response is not to eat. You know, Esther's a bit of that. You might know the, the feeling of losing your appetite when there's serious anxiety going on. Um, uh, I remember when I first got married, like my appetite was not there in the morning, like not because I was doing anything wrong, but because uh, it's a big moment. There's there's some anxiety there. You might know the feeling of losing your appetite because of worry, because of grief. And fasting can be this, this moment of embodying an appropriate grief in response to horrible things that are going on in the world. And as well as that, there's there's a measure of a prayer that so often goes with it, pleading, God, this is awful, bring your kingdom. And isn't that what we ought to be doing? Don't we want to be growing in earnestness as we pray, in 
in really caring about what's going on in the world and the things that we pray into. And those things can be expressed and embodied in fasting in a way that, that seems to move God's heart. And he may not answer still the way that we, we desire, but let's do our part in this. Uh, Tim as well, he, he makes the point that most Christians around most of the world for most of history have considered fasting a crucial practice and we've largely dropped it. It's quite normal for believers in in former ages to have a regular, sometimes weekly discipline of fasting. Uh, so I'm going to give links uh, below this to, to his talk, a talk from Steph Liston and a book as well. Folks, it really seems like this matters. It feels like we're missing out somehow significantly if we ignore it. Uh, in some ways, it's my least favourite spiritual discipline, maybe unsurprisingly. My experience is that uh, when I fast, I generally don't get loads of extra time to pray, like instead of eating, because often well, the kids are still eating and you kind of want to be together. But yet there is a strengthening and some kind of blessing and honouring God that goes on in all of that, that is worthwhile. Uh, my experience is that it hurts, but actually not that much. Um, that may be worse if you usually drink a lot of coffee. I don't have much experience there. I know, you know, there can be headaches and things that go with that. I, I think even that fasting can be a moment to reflect. Am I habitually eating or drinking too much of this or that? God, do you want to reset any of that? I find that the anticipation is generally worse than actually doing it. Um, so if I can think, well, I'm fasting tomorrow, uh, and then it's like, oh, but but I'm a little bit poorly, or I'm a bit tired, or I'm a bit hungry. It's so easy uh, to come up with reasons not to do it. And there may be good actual medical reasons for you not to do it if you're pregnant or, or unwell in some different ways that mean it would be unwise. Then be wise and don't fast. But for most of us, I think the encouragement is let's get on and do it. Um, Richard Foster, this is a, a book about spiritual disciplines and there's a chapter on fasting in there some really helpful stuff about uh, partly the the meaning behind it the reason for it um, historical practice and some practical stuff about when you fast what's it going to feel like what's it going to feel like when you fast for a day for a week for longer um, so helpful stuff in there but speaking about um, doing a 24-hour a fast or well missing sort of three meals where are we? You'll probably feel some hunger pangs or discomfort before the time is up. That is not real hunger. Your stomach has been trained through years of conditioning to give signals of hunger at certain hours. In many ways, the stomach is like a spoiled child, and a spoiled child does not need indulgence, but needs discipline. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that counter to so much of our culture? Uh, and yet this is a, a spiritual discipline that we want to lay hold of. There's power in it. We're, so we've got a week of prayer coming up in January. Uh, I feel a sense of excitement about what God's doing in the church, a sense of excitement about witness, a sense of excitement about growing in maturity as a church together, growing in uh, devotion to the things that matter. And I want to encourage us, let's do some fasting as we pray. Um, if you have never done that before, you might want to start with a meal, uh, just missing a meal. So after breakfast, eat nothing until dinner. Um, Foster, the, the guy I just read from, he's, he's um, a bit harder than me. He says uh, a good place to start would be two meals. So have lunch uh, and then don't eat until lunch the next day. And then you can build from that. It might be that uh, you, you've done a bit of fasting before. You might want to fast for a full day. You might want to fast for a few days. You might want to fast the whole week. Um, I, I, I think there's a measure of you know, be wise, be sensible. There will be people you might need to talk to about it um, as you begin that. I think something that can really get in the way of fasting is never talking about it. So in Matthew, the same as with prayer, Jesus is telling us, don't make fasting a show, just the same as he says not to make prayer a show. Uh, don't do it to impress people, just the same as he says, don't pray. Uh, fancy prayers to impress people and in both cases he's saying uh, these matter and and you ought to do them you just want to do them right 
But with prayer, we don't say, oh, well, I'm never going to tell anyone I'm praying then. I'm never going to talk about prayer. That's That would be kind of mad, wouldn't it? We, we don't want to do it wrong. Um, but if we never talk about how much we pray, how are we going to encourage each other and grow in prayer? And it's the same with fasting. Practically, it's you know it's sometimes not possible to tell no one. You know, if you share a home with others, they will notice if you're not having meals. You probably want to tell them in advance so they're not making a portion for you or, or what have you. you know, your kids will notice if there's children in the home. Um, but we can often end up simply not fasting or, or not doing it or not talking about it because no one talks about it. Or we feel awkward like, oh, maybe I shouldn't talk about that because then I'll lose my reward. Or, But like prayer, it can actually be really helpful to fast with someone, whether that's a friend or a spouse, someone you live with, uh, or to tell someone you're going to be fasting just for the sake of keeping accountable. So it can be much easier to do it if you've told someone you're going to do it. I think I've probably said enough for now. This, is, this has gone fairly long, but I, I guess we're convinced that this matters. We want to pursue this discipline. I, I want to pursue this discipline more fruitfully in my life, and we want the church to grow in this and to practice it. We want that as we come into a week of prayer, but I think for it to become a regular part of our lives, even when we're not sort of announcing a time of fasting as a church, this would be something that we that we practice. Uh, if you have got questions, please come and chat to us. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, I am going to give some links below to uh, the talks I mentioned, a book. But church, let's um, let's do it. We need God's help, don't we? So, Father, would you help us in this? Would you bless us? Would you do us good? Teach us how to follow you faithfully and um, strengthen us and do us good as we go into the new year. Amen. God bless you, church. Look forward to seeing you soon.